of me back home. And it's fabulous. And it's really, really wonderful to so, see so many of you taking a Sunday evening off to spend some time with us. To the High Commissioner's Representative Himali, on the Consul General Mr. Vikram Tunga, and Mr. Rani Bhutan, all of the organizing in Sydney, our sincere representation on behalf of the Institute and my dedication as well. I'll very quickly give you an overview about what Syntex has been doing over the last nine years, and followed by that, we will put Gihan giving us a feel for the scientific direction of the Institute and the plans going forward. At the back end, I will summarize exactly how each of you could be a part of patented and sold by Syntex for commercialization. The hydrophobic technologies involved in this fabric softener are being worked on separately for applications in domestic and commercial paints. Enabling industry move up the value chain remains a key focus of Centre. It will be the hottest day of the year. <laughs> uh, Hare and your team. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for turning up today. I'll leave all the technicalities and the important stuff for the team that has come from Sri Lanka. But I'd just like to touch on something. These young men have given up lucrative positions outside and come back to their motherland to contribute to its future. Share their knowledge, improve upon those who are in Sri Lanka by working together so that those in Sri Lanka can also reach their true potential. And uh, towards that, we are, we are on the cusp of, we are fortunate to be born in an era where technology is moving so fast. And with that come the attendant stuff, whether it be in sport or other areas, whether it's in entertainment. Ilmenite-based titanium dioxide produced using Ilmenite for Sri Lanka's paint industry. To address this, Centec in combination with Lars Corning's limit. Good afternoon. Uh, I'm happy to read the message from His Excellency Somasundaram Skandakuma, the High Commissioner for Sri Lanka in Australia. While regretting very much my inability to be present, it gives me great pleasure to send this brief message for Slintex meeting with the Sri Lankan diaspora in Sydney. On behalf of Consul General Lal, thank you all for your attendance and for the support extended to the visit. Innovation is no longer a choice, but a mandatory requirement for any country wishing to compete with the rapidly changing future. Slintech's visit to Australia could therefore not have been better timed. Neither could its affairs have been in more competent hands. CEO Harindi Silva Vijay Ratna, after two decades in investment banking overseas, has returned home with an impeccable reputation to share his experience and knowledge with his country of birth. Dr. Gihar Namaratunga is Professor of Engineering and Head of Electronics Power and Energy Conversion at the University of Cambridge. In addition to these inspiring credentials, he has also been the recipient of the silver medal awarded by the Royal Academy of Engineering. I have really no words to say when I look at the commitment made by Gihan in terms of spending the last six years with us committing his time, spending about 100 to 120 days at the Institute, providing leadership as the Chief of Research and Innovation. The journey to Homagame is no joke as well. It's an hour's trip, and he has done that with great commitment. And as we look forward to the future, both of us realize that it's important to build capacity and the succession as well. And we look to engage with the diaspora abroad, to look at possibilities for people to engage more closely and offers some level of commitment similar to what he's done. Professor Karna Ratna, one of the pioneer <coughs> chief scientists at Slintec, when he first began, has now moved as the vice chancellor of the Slintec Academy and provides leadership to that academic board. 
Sananda Hityarachi, a former CEO of an activated company, Heka, one of the largest exporters of activated carbon, offers guidance in the engineering process. And Professor K. Nanin, this is by the science team leader. So this is a picture taken in 2017 of really the strength that we, sh we wish you to be a part of. 92 in number as of February 28, 2018. This staff spent is split on the following basis. 25 PhDs and these are where they receive their qualifications from. So some of them are from Sri Lanka but the majority of them are from overseas. In terms of the split of staff of the 92, 68 are basically science and engineering related staff. Predominantly primary requirement because the road infrastructure still needs improvement and people do find it difficult and challenging to move forward. In terms of the expansion plans and the whole location of Homagama, we are on the main road, we are about four kilometers inside moving in from Homagama. Today we have got the Ministry of Defense Center for Research and Development on the right hand side of us. We got the Weights and Measurements Unit of Sri Lanka on the left hand side of us, the SLT Data Center in front of us. The Mahindra Rajapaksa School, which consists of nearly 7,000 uh, students, scholarship students, who are operating out of that today, as well as the National School of Business Management, has set up 9,000 student faculty, which is already operating just 0.5 kilometers down the same road. I'm happy to say that the Kalama University, the Jayapathanapur University, and the Moratu University's technology faculties are just about to start their building work again down the same facility. So today, that whole location becomes part of the Megapolis program as well as an educational hub which we hope within three to five years the entire infrastructure will be second to none and will offer an opportunity for our youngsters who could today travel from Matra or Gaul quicker to Slintec than from Kalambo to Slintec. So we hope that the future looks good and we will talk about the science with Professor Gihan and then I'll summarize the collaboration opportunities. Thank you very much for the opportunity. Now I invite uh, <coughs> Professor Giham Amarathunka, Chief of Research and Innovation Atlantic, to talk about strategic research res uh, direction, research focus. Hi, thank you very much for coming on a Sunday evening um, to uh, listen to us and to share with, uh, give us the opportunity to share with you the vision uh, of uh, Slintech and also what we're doing. As Hari mentioned, I'm uh, the Chief of Research and Innovation on a part-time basis. My home institution is the University of Cambridge in England, and I uh, live in England, but I come to Sri Lanka uh, on a regular basis to uh, direct the research at Slintech and, and also to advise on research directions and other scientific problems. So, my, uh, in the next uh, 20 minutes or so, I'll give you a flavor of the research which we're doing, but starting with some historic perspective, and then uh, take you forward to one perhaps a little focused area which we want to pursue, right? because we think that is a great strategic opportunity for Sri Lanka, um, which has in this particular area we have a, a USP or unique selling position. Okay, so the, when Swintech was uh, originally started um, the, in 2008, it was a national priority to enhance Sri Lankan products with technology, i.e. to add value um, in a public-private partnership basis. Um, the products, you know, who defines these products, is not defined by Google scientists, they're defined by the private sector partners who invested in Spectac initially. So we, when we initiated our research, we did so with a great focus in terms of our products which were directed directly by industry. Now, the, uh, right now, we are open to the wider industry. We did that in about 2011. And we have a number of industry partners who engage with us on product development type research or strategic research for their uh, commercial uh, activities. And they pay full uh, commercial rate fees and rates for that. In 2012, um, four years later, we additionally defined uh, our own research programs. Uh, this was to attract new private sector investors, and the basis of this was on the basis that innovations, uh, innovations uh, from the, has a number of endemic plants. There are plants which can't be found anywhere else in the world, 
and these have medicinal properties, and these have been recorded over the last 50 years by uh, natural products chemists in Sri Lanka, working in the university. And then what we want to do is to take this and take it to the next step of building these as therapeutic agents, uh, not only on their own, but also encompassing the nanotechnology-based delivery system, which I will talk about uh, presently. In, um, then the advanced agriculture, then smart textiles, including clothing-based cyber-physical systems, which is the electronics I've talked about. This will be backed by the Synthetic Organic Chemistry Lab uh, and then Synthetic Biology Lab. Now, uniquely, uh, Slintech also has the ability to go from the lab to um, look at production, i.e. pilot plant facilities. We don't only do lab-based research because if you do lab-based research and say, oh, that's successful, but how are you going to commercialize this? You can't go to industry and say, well, I've got this great thing in the lab, why don't you commercialize it? They won't do it, because it's too much of a problem. So we take care to ensure that what we do in the lab can be scaled and has the potential for commercialization through a pilot plan process. And we are very lucky to have Mr. Anand Ehtiarachi who leads that effort for us. Um, and then, of course, spin-outs and startup startups coming um, out of this research and, um, for um, societal benefit. Of course, this is all also underpinned by commercial contract research, which we carry out for industry, which is our original mission, uh, which is customer-defined research. Um, now, what I'll do is I will just give you um, some flavor of this area of this natural compound-based medicines and uh, introduce you to some of the things which we've been looking at. Okay, so naturally occurring therapeutic agents as potential nutraceuticals. The word nutraceutical, for those who may not come across it, comes from the word nutrient and pharmaceutical, and can be defined as the food or part of a food or nutrient that provides health benefits, including the prevention and treatment of a disease. There are nutrients, herbal phytochemicals, dietary supplements. Um, now, the the example I will take is this uh, compound called linamarine, which is based found in cassava. Cassava is what is called manioc. The manioc plant has uh, this compound called linamarine, which has been shown to have anti-cancer properties. Now, we couple that, but that's known. We have not discovered that. That is known, documented, and that's our starting point. But of course, not consistent. Some uh, some data shows it's positive, some data shows it's not positive. It works against some cancer cell lines, not against some others. So there's some data, there's some established um, evidence, but it's not 100% uh, you know, clear that it will always work. What we have done is we've used our uh, expertise in, nano in, uh, in uh, nanotechnology to formulate this linear marine agent as a part of a nano delivery system. What does that mean? We take the active compound, we encapsulate it in a nanomaterial, and we target that nanomaterial to certain cells where it needs to go, i.e. cancer cells. Okay, so the, uh, the compound is this, which is linamarine, and the active ingredients is this, this is cyanide, hydrocyanide, there's a cyanide group there. If that cyanide re group releases, as you can imagine, it's cyanide, it kills any cell which is around it. Normally, this is locked up and is quite safe, but in the presence of an enzyme, you can get this breakdown of this molecule, which will release this HCA over here. So the key is to be in a pH condition and to get it to the cell where you want it and get it to dissociate so that you release this uh, hydrocyanide. It turns out that this linamarase compound, which is also called beta glucosoate, uh, glucosidase, is more prevalent, prevalent in cancer cells than in normal cells. So there is a natural targeting that this compound will dissociate in, um, in a cancer cell environment. But we make this much more precise now by doing this nano delivery, the nano drug delivery. So this is a method which has been used for pharmaceuticals as well. For normal cancer drugs as well, nanomedicine is used because um, you know, when, you take a, when you take a drug, it turns out that to have a residual dose in your uh, system, 
the amount that you have to take is such that you know, two thirds of it passes through your body and is not effective. But if you can encapsulate it and keep it in the cells for longer and you target the cells, then you need much less of the drug and you, it becomes more effective. So these are the uh, nanomedicine aspects which we are coupling with uh, these natural compounds. And so this is some data. Uh, I'm going to be a little bit, uh, bear with me for five minutes, but I think it's interesting. You'll see that this is the control, and this is again some breast cancer cell lines. Um, so this is the control, which is black. Okay. So this is cell viability. That means how many cells last after treatment of a certain drug. And this is the linear marine. If you just administer it um, in without anything, okay, that's in either with the red and or with the enzyme, which is the blue, and you see this cell viability uh, study. So you look at the number here, it's micrograms per milliliter. You need about 200 with the enzyme together if you put it in the cell, then you see, see cell viability. The Science Technology and Research Secretary and the incumbent CEO of SlingTech as your trustee. So effectively we are looking at 25 million and there are three options that we have decided to share with you. And we hope that one of them might appeal to you to contribute, if it means something to you. The first option is just to make a contribution of whatever you think is relevant. And we say even a hundred dollars would make a difference and I'll tell you why. If each one of you in this room today, which numbers probably 85, 90 people, could bring in and contribute hundred dollars and ensure we reach the 170,000 Sri Lankans in Australia and multiply that by 100, we are looking at 17 million dollars from Australia. Now I'm pretty sure you all are very challenged financially too because you have your own careers, your own children to educate and anything. But hundred dollars is not beyond many of us. And if we do stretch our hand to reach out to our friends and family, to also be a partner in a hundred dollar contribution, maybe we could reach the numbers that matter. The second option is a significantly different option. Now we are saying a contribution of thousand dollars with a specific period of time where the capital gets repaid. So basically what we are telling you there is, instead of keeping your money in this country, if you can contribute us thousand dollars or ten thousand dollars, Deploy it in Sri Lankan bank in Australian dollars. The interest income that would be accrued on those Australian dollars would be utilized for the <coughs> endowment fund. And the capital is yours, it's in your name, and will be returned to you in your specified name of time. So for example, you say, you can give you $10,000 for three years. Any one bank that you choose to operate in Sri Lanka is fine. That money will be held in your account, in your name, and in three years' time on maturity, your $10,000 will be re returned to you, and you would have instructed the bank to ensure the interest annually gets transferred to the benefit of the endowment trust. The third option is slightly unique in the fact that my being a finance personality, I decided this might be an option that would be a little bit more appealing. It's a no-loss situation to you. It only requires you to consider parking a little bit of your savings in Sri Lanka as against in Australia. Today, I'm looking at a $10,000 deposit. The money will be in your name, again, with a specified period for maturity. But these are the numbers. So today, if you keep a $10,000 in an Australian bank of repute, you will probably get about 2.25% as a maximum return on a 12 to 18 month deposit, $225. What we are suggesting is the equivalent $10,000 maintained in Australian dollars in your name, in the bank of your choice, would generate $375. And what we are suggesting to you is just the differential gets transferred to the benefit of the endowment trust in your name, and you on maturity will receive your $10,000 together with the interest accrued at the same rate that you would get in Australia. We would even consider increasing that marginally to ensure that any tax implications that may be there on the extra little bit of income 
also gets covered so that you're not out of pocket in terms of that. So these are three options that we thought might interest you because as I said, every one of us has our own concerns and many of you do a lot of work at home and therefore it is not fair for us to come here and do this. But at the end of the day, we felt that if we living in Sri Lanka need to progress in some form, we need to make an effort. And there is one inspiring statement that I was happy to see when I was in New Orleans three years ago on a tree. We said, plant a tree in whose shade you will not lie. And that really inspired me to say, let's do a little bit. At the end of the day, let's not worry about how big the tree grows or whether the tree grows. But the first thing and the most important thing is to plant the seed. Uh, and we've tried a little bit and I thank the team that's here today who have also gone on a non-stop trip so far, a few more days to go in terms of what we're doing here as well as what we do in Perth. But it's been tremendously rewarding and seeing all of you here today is really absolutely fantastic. And I don't think any one of us expected such a big turnout and we hope that you will engage with us in some form or fashion depending on your capability. Thanks for being with us. We're happy to take questions. So it's two orders of magnitude below in terms of the concentration of need to have the same effect. Um, so this is the IC50 values. This is used, that is the uh, value at which 50% of the cells have died. Okay? And um, what I would like to draw your attention is to these two numbers. Of course, the amount after 72 hours, um, the amount that is required to kill 50% of the cell are these values here. When we have it in uh, nanoparticles, we call without the enzyme. And this is the same response you get with the positive control, which is the pharma drug doxorubicin. Okay. So you can see that there's a natural compound which is as effective as doxorubicin, which is the first line of treatment against breast cancer, liver cancer, many cancers. And uh, you know, to put a value proposition on this, just as a marker, doxorubicin, the global revenue projected for 2018 for breast cancer alone is about US dollars 200 million, and overall it's about a billion dollars. So what we have is a potential cancer, um, cancer treatment regime, which is coming out of our work based around natural medicines. But again, we're not trying to advocate this as a curative uh, medicine, but rather a preventive medicine. Okay, the other program which we have is around Alzheimer's, which we've just started, and the uh, aim here is to look at uh, some natural compounds which may help prevent the onset of Alzheimer's. As you may know, there's a lot of interest in coconut oil, and this is based on a study uh, done by the, University of the, uh, the medical school at the University of California, Los Angeles, who showed that coconut oil has some benefit in the prevention of the buildup of the plaques in Alzheimer's. And our approach is to have a cocktail of natural products and to look at how they interact in this therapy. Um, this is so there's this Lunavilla, this Bacopa, um, then coconut oil, which, is, uh, which we will look at, together with turmeric, activated by piperine, and uh, cinnamon. Okay, so that gives you a flavor of uh, what we do for research, how we spend our time, and what we're trying to do uh, in a Sri Lankan context, but which is also globally relevant. So thank you very much.